one of the most frequently discussed topics in real estate these days is backlogs and the severe shortage of housing supply throughout the past year has had a significant impact on the economy. The headlines that suggest that the lack of available homes is the reason why home prices are so high and that uh, housing market crash is impossible to ignore or are unavoidable. But what if I told you that the housing scarcity idea is all a lie, much like Morpheus did in the matrix and that the, the shortage has ended uh, collapse in the housing market is certain in this video. I want to discuss this with you. I'll talk about the open inventory situation in the U S housing market in this video, uh, as well as the implications for home prices in the upcoming six to 12 months. This video is for you. If you're interested in real estate or even if you're not, but you feel negatively about the situation of the economy. So please wait like us and remember to subscribe. You read news about a shortage of inventory driving up housing prices everywhere you look. Many have suggested that because of the constrained availability scenario in 2022, home prices would not drop. Us is anticipated that 4.8 million single family homes will be sold in the US overall, accounting for a sizable amount of the country's GDP. 87% of all sales being previously owned homes with only about 13% being new construction homes. Uh, let me put it in a slightly different way for those of you who are unfamiliar with this sector. Existing home sales are those of previously owned properties. New home sales are those of newly constructed residences. Over 7 million single family homes have been sold since the end of 2020, which has led to a 2.2 million unit or 31 decrease in the total amount of transactions. Demand is declining as a result of the sharp increase in mortgage rates, which renders properties entirely unaffordable, at least at higher prices. Most people come to the conclusion that prices for homes in the area must increase because the housing market can hardly support a four month supply. Uh, the current monthly supply value of Ford is displayed in a scatter plot with the month's supply of all homes in the United States on the bottom axis and the home price growth rate six months from now on the left axis. This suggests that in six months, the annualized increase rate of housing prices will be around 8%. It's not horrible, but the tale has subtleties. The primary one is that there is proof that costs are already going down. According to the Schiller National Home Price Index for August, home prices are dropping at an annualized pace of four, which is a total collapse from the 25 increases we saw at the start of 2022. Given the limited month supply of homes in the market, it is unclear how home prices can have decreased for the first time in over a decade. There are 9.2 months worth of new development and 3.2 months worth of existing homes on the market right now. Uh, it's amazing how different the economy was from just a few months ago. Uh, the inventory of existing dwellings fell to a record low of 1.5 months at the start of 2022. In 2021 and 2022, the house market was appallingly unhealthy. An incredible surge of purchases and refinances resulted from the sharp decline in mortgage rates to 2.5%, a level that no one ever imagined would be achievable. Everyone locked in at that 2.5% rate, and now that mortgage rates have risen beyond 7%. You would never be able to sell your home unless you were under tremendous hardship. Nobody would trade in their house for a 7% rate in order to receive a 2.5% rate. So here's the thing. We now find ourselves in a rare circumstance where there's little inventory due to low demand. If upgrading to a larger home requires giving up their present exceptionally cheap mortgage rate, no one wants to do so. Homeowners are holding on to too much of the existing home stock that would otherwise go up for sale for the first time that I can remember. These homes will never be put on the market or put up for sale due to the fact that existing home sales make up 87 market sales. This is preventing total inventory numbers from rising. Houses built recently are a whole other story. Uh, new homes are typically sold by corporations who prefer not to store inventory for extended periods of time and do not have a past owner. In the new house market, the monthly supply is increasing to its highest point since 2008. Uh, the 7% mortgage rates that were instituted a few months ago caused the market for homes to absolutely collapse. We observed that home construction companies were making large concessions on their house sales in an effort to lower the transaction's effective cost. They would aim to maintain the same sales price while providing a few benefits. These compromises soon gave way to cost. In September, price reductions were made according to 24 of builders surveyed by the National Association of Home Builders. I won't bore you with the calculations, but 
There are a lot of speculators and flippers out there who don't want to keep inventory on their books. Their monthly supply figures are increasing. You can say to me that it makes no difference to you that these folks have more stock. Why should we worry if they go bankrupt when the economy collapses along with them, when they made a lot of money, when the economy was doing well? Builders of homes, after all, choose prices. They have a limit on how long they will keep product on hand before discounting it. The rest of the market will follow if they start selling houses for a low price and the outcome won't be good. The idea that the 2007 meltdown occurred because people with bad credit took out loans to purchase homes they couldn't afford is proving to be false, according to a growing body of research. An Ember working paper really contends that the bubble that burst during the Great Recession was sparked by rich and middle class flippers and speculators who destroyed local home markets when they massively defaulted. Uh, the researchers discovered that individuals with credit scores in the middle and upper ranges of the credit score distribution experienced the largest increases in mortgage debt during the housing boom. The study examined a sizable data set of anonymous credit scores from Equifax, a credit reporting company. It was mostly these borrowers who went into vault regarding the people with bad credit, the so-called subprime borrowers who were blamed for starting the crisis, uh, their borrowing remained essentially unchanged during the expansion. Although these debtors typically experience high rates of default, this did not happen following the financial crisis of 2007. After the boom years, 70 of foreclosures were attributed to the lowest quartile in the credit score distribution. After the crisis, this percentage dropped to just 35. What does this signify this indicates that the people who caused the market to crash were not individuals who were having trouble paying for essentials, but rather the rich flippers. That means that the end is near if flippers start to struggle. The second largest decline in property prices in recorded history will begin with flippers. I suppose that concludes this video. Although it may not be encouraging, I hope it will help you get ready for what is ahead. After learning about this concerning facts, what are your thoughts? Tell us in the space provided for comments. Please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. If this is your first time watching the video, I appreciate you seeing. And uh, we'll see you the following video. Music.